Chapter 3.5, Quick Review, Problems 1 through 10. This section, section 3.5, has to do with equation solving and modeling, and specifically with logarithmic equations. So this is just a warm-up exercise set for that section. In exercise 1 through 4, prove that each function in the given pair is the inverse of the other. Well, we could look at finding if these functions were inverse of each other graphically. So if we graph this first function, for instance, e to the 2x, e to the 2x would look something like this. And uh, the natural logarithm of x to the 1 half power is going to look something like this. And to, when considered together, these functions are going to reflect about, each, about the line y equals x. So that would be a graphical demonstration, but not a proof. When you talk about proof, you're talking about analytic demonstration, working out the algebra of it. So for that, we need to find the, write down the definition of, of an inverse function. Okay, for, for functions f of x, and g of x, they are inverses of each other. If the composition of function f of g of x is equal to x and the other way g of f of x equals x and also we can write that in in uh, composition of function notation we could write f this little open circle g of x and g open circle of f of x. So the same type of principle. Well, for this one, if we take f of g of x, that's going to be equal to e to the 2. And this x here, we're going to replace with this ln, uh, which is natural logarithm x to the power of one half. And to simplify this, if we work all this out and simplify, we should end up with x. Well, for this two natural logarithm of x to the one half power, we can simplify using our rules of logarithms by taking this one half, multiplying it out front by the two, so we would just get the natural logarithm of x. So we can rewrite this expression as e to the natural logarithm of x. And we can rewrite this uh, exponential expression as a logarithm by writing this log base e, which that's the natural logarithm, of some quantity is going to be equal to ln x, which is log base e of x. And so what is what do you have in the question mark? What does that have to be? Well, question mark equals x. So therefore, uh, f of g of x is equal to x. So that's a, this will be the proof or demonstration of that. And then if we work the backward method, we put g of f of x, we would get uh, ln, writing the g first, and then x, well x is going to be e to the 2x, and that would be to the power of 1 half. And so multiplying 1 half times 2, we would get ln e 
excuse me, yeah, the log, natural log of, of e to the 2x, and then e to the power of a natural log of, well, I said 2x should be just x, e to the x. So the natural logarithm and the e to the power of cancel each other will be remain, will have x remaining. Okay, so that's a demonstration for proof. Problem number three, same thing. We have uh, prove each function in the given pairs, the inverse of the other. We, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and skirt the composition proof we did on problem one. I'm just gonna go ahead and go through the steps of finding the inverses that, that we have, the five-step process. Step number one is we change f of x to y. So we put y equals one-third of the natural logarithm of x. And then uh, we're going to change positions of x and y. So we're going to rewrite this as x equals one-third uh, ln y. So we're just going to solve for y. Multiply by 3. If we multiply by 3, multiply by 3, both sides of the equation, we have 3x equals natural logarithm of y. And what I'm going to do is rewrite this as log base e of y equals 3x. Well, what that's going to do is we can rewrite this as e to the power of 3x equals y. Does that look familiar? Yeah. And so we can rewrite that as f negative 1 of x is equal to e to the power of 3x. And what do we know right here? See that? G of x and f negative 1 of x are the same. So that's a different type of proof or demonstration. It's not the classic classical composition of function, but um, definitely inverses of each other. And if we went the other direction, uh, solve, put this g of x equals e to 3x through the same process we would get the other side here, which would be uh, g negative 1 of x equals 1 third ln x. Next, in exercises 5 and 6, write the number in scientific notation. So the remainder of these exercises has to do with essentially getting decimal places in, in proper, properly arranged. And that's really a big skill when dealing with large, extremely large numbers and extremely small numbers which scientific notation helps with. And it's also very helpful for work with logarithms because with logarithms, you're taking very large or very small numbers and essentially making them an abbreviated number. And so uh, what we have is you're going to write the expression in powers of 10. That's scientific notation. So usually you're going to see that as times 10 to some power. So you're going to have a number between 1 and 10 times 10 to some power. Well, one trick you can use is you can kind of move decimal places over. And so if we go ahead and make this 7.78, we can write this as 7.78 times, and I like to, instead of put the x there, I like to put the multiplication dot y, because at algebra classes and beyond, this x is oftentimes used as a as variable or unknown. And so when you put the x for times, that's kind of defeats that purpose. So we're going to have 10 to the, okay, uh, 1,000 is 10 to the third power, and three zero and six zeros is a million, 10 to the sixth power. And we've got two more zeros here. So if we count over from the right to the end, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to have 10 to the 8th power, and kilometers will be our units. So it's, it's really a matter, largely, of keeping track of the decimal places. And that's what we have. That's a scientific notation. Next on our problem, 
uh, seven, exercise seven and eight, write the number in decimal form. And so we have Avogadro's number is about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking this 6.02 and adding, you're adding 23 zeros to that. So we could come over here and just, that's going to be one zero here, another one, and all of the way on to 23. Right? We can go like this, so we get 23 of them. But one way of one way of looking at it to get 23 zeros is uh, we can write okay six okay 23 zeros would be like you would have work backwards here right this would be this would be thousands next three zeros millions okay next three be trillions next three would be one million I'm not sure the numbers there maybe we have 12 zeros now right okay, it's 15 zeros that's 18 okay and then 21 so we have 21 zeros here, right? And this would be like 10 to the 21st power. If we put a one here, we would get 10 to the 21st power, but we have 602 times that. So we're gonna put 602 out here. So we have 602 comma and so on. And we could just to make sure we have 10 to the 23 power, we can count from the 6.02. So from 0 0.02, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, through 23. So this would be our Avogadro's number written out in decimal form. Okay, next on our problem, which is nine. Uh, use scientific notation to simplify the expression. Leave your answer in scientific notation. So, let's see. We have 186,000 times 31 million. So, what we have essentially here is we have 1.86 times 10 to the power of 5 times 3.1 times 10 to the power of, now we have a million is 10 to the power of 6, right? Zero, 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 this, this, these sets of, of three zeros between commas, this one on the right would be thousands place, the next one on the left would be millions, and so we'd have 3.1 times 10 to the 6th, because we add 1, 31, so 10 to the 7th. And so what we're going to end up with is adding our, adding our exponents, we would have 1.86 times 3.1 times 10 to the power of, you have to add the 5 and the 7, so that would be 10 to the 12th power. So, uh, using our calculator, simplify the expression. If we multiply 1.86 by 3.1, 1.86 times 3.1, we should have it. And so we'll have 5.766. So we go over here, 5.766. Times 10 to the 12th power. Okay, just looking really quickly, 10. Here for 10, you're going to have a division problem. So you're going to have 8 to the uh, 
negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 10 times 10 to negative 7 over 5 times 10 to the 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, times 10 to the negative 6. So you're going to end up with uh, negative subtracting exponents. You're going to end up with 8 over 5 times 10 to the, let's see, negative 7 minus negative 6. That's going to be like negative 7 plus 6. So you have 10 to the negative 1. And then 8 over 5 is going to be 1.6. So you get 1.6 times 10 to the negative 1 power. So that's a, not a number problem, that's a division problem. I want to make you be able to have a look at that. Anyway, good luck on all the other even number problems, and thanks for viewing.